right. Glad to be here today. I'm good to be in the house of the Lord. Right? Amen. And you say it's good to be uh, in the house of the Lord. Amen. Right? Amen. I know the verse he talks about, he said, uh, the zeal for thy house has eaten me up. You look forward to going to the house of the Lord. Uh, through the week, are you thinking about when you're going to get to come together and worship the Lord, be with the brethren? Uh, I want today, uh, Pastor Keith is not with us today. He is sick. Uh, family, some of his family has been sick. He was really hoping to be here, but it didn't work out. So uh, we changed up things at the last minute. Brother Marvin talked, and I'm preaching today. And I want to talk to you today about something you know about. If you're a Christian, you should know your Bible, right? We should all know our Bible, the Word of God. I want to talk to you today and preach to you about the power of the Bible. And I'll tell you, there's power in God's Word. Amen. The Bible tells us in Romans 1 16, you know of uh, the verse, Romans 1 16, I want to read it all, but I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Are you ashamed of the gospel of Christ today? No, I don't believe you are. For it is the power of God unto salvation Amen. to everyone that believes. Everyone that believes. Amen. To everybody that come to God. They right. can shop for he grants them repentance, they can come. Everybody's going to have an opportunity to the Jew first and also to the Greek. So hallelujah, we can, uh, we can be saved over 1 Corinthians 1. In 1 Corinthians 1, it talks about the preaching of the cross. The preaching of the cross is foolishness to them which what? Are perishing. That's how you know if somebody's perishing. Because the preaching is foolishness to them. Not just preaching, the preaching of the cross. That's, right. That's foolish. I don't want to hear about it. I already know that. Brother, there's some more you can know. Amen. You believe that? Right. Come there's on, some God. more in this book you can know. Amen. Don't nobody know it all but God. Nobody. Right. Nobody but Him. And you in His school until you write it. I hope everybody understands. You ain't done got so much of God and so much of His knowledge and so much is divine nature that you can't get some more. That's right. And even think such a thought is pride. Right. Right. Think that you done got that. That's why I said to beware. Beware that you stand. Lest you fall. Amen. If you think that you got everything you know about God, then you already fall. You hear me now? Mm -hmm. Hear what I'm saying? But there's power in this book of God here today. Amen. The power in The preaching of the cross to them which are perishing. In a foolish, but unto us which are saved. Oh. Not just us, but all that are saved is the power of God to salvation to who? Who's it to? This power of salvation. You know who it's to? What I say, First Corinthians 1 18, for the preaching of the cross is to them that perish, butchers is a minute ago, to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved. People tell me, I've been reading on here, people I thought were mature, that they don't know they're saved. I'm talking about people that's out preaching. Mm. They're preaching all over. They say we can't know to the end. Right. The Bible says you can know you are saved. Hey, Do you man. believe God? Preach Do you believe His Word? Hey. That means you may you are saved, but you don't believe God about this. you got some more repenting to do. That ain't just repenting of sin. It's repenting of our bad doctrine. Man, God. Amen, yeah. God says you can know. Let me read that again. But unto us which are saved, not to say we're going to be saved. Yeah, I'm going to be saved. That's true. Right. Too. But I am saved right now. Are saved, it is the power of God. That's what this Bible says. Amen. Right? Amen. First John 5 says, These things I write unto you who believe in the name of the Son of God that you may know Come on, you have eternal life. You may know you have eternal life hey. and believe in the name of the Son of God. Is that a sufficient to believe in His name to save you? Yes, it is. There's power in this Bible. Amen. Let's talk about it today. By this Bible, we're born again. Turn to James 1. There's going to be a lot of scriptures today. James 1. I hope so. You're talking about the power of the Bible. <laughs> Yeah. There's going to be a lot of verses. Praise the Lord. Hope I can find them all in a timely manner. James 1 18. Of his own will begat he us with the word of truth that we should. 
should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. So James 1 18, I turn to 1 Peter 1 23. 1 Peter 1 23. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, how? By the word of God. Amen. Which liveth and abideth forever. Yes. So, talking about the power of the Bible. By it we're born again. What does Romans 10, 17 say? So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. And why do we preach? How shall they hear without a preacher? Absolutely. How shall they hear Amen. without a preacher? Amen. I need preachers. That's right. Amen. By this word of God we grow. You're under at 1 Peter, 1 Peter 2 2. As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby. Are you still growing? Or have you got stagnated? Have you said, oh, I don't need to Look, they even think you can't grow some more. That's a problem. That's a problem. We all should be learning. That's why you need to be in a church. You need to be in a church because you're going to be challenged about what you believe. That's right. Come on now. You ain't just going to believe I believe this. If you know what's wrong, brother, the brother and sister, and they don't agree with what you say, and then somebody's going to ask you a question. Oh, yeah, they can do it in a nice, loving manner. But they might ought to ask you some questions. You teach you to preach something that ain't found in the book of God. In the Bible. Amen, So that's how you grow. And then you're going to have teachers, you're going to have preachers. Uh, so you, you'll grow more and more. Guess what else this, this Bible does? It makes us clean. Brother Marvin talked about it this morning. He, he actually went through this verse. John 15, 3. John 15, 3. Now ye are clean through the Word. You are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Then he begins to talk about abiding me. Abiding me. But he said you're clean. He makes you clean when you're in Christ. Amen. He's the only one that can't make you clean. You can't live holy enough in of yourself to make yourself clean. I hope everybody understands that. Amen. That's why he said he is holy. We, our holiness is imputed. Just like our righteousness. Once he makes us holy, then we can be holy. That's you right. cannot be holy right. until he, the one that is holy, and the one that was holy, and the one that's going to be holy, until he makes you holy. That's right. Right. Yep. Don't get your car ahead of the horse. Think of you making yourself holy by right. You stop this, you stop this, you stop this, and you become holy. No, it won't make you holy. No. Nope. It won't. I did it when it will make you. It'll make you a Pharisee and it'll make you religious. That's right. That's what it'll do. Jesus makes you holy. Jesus saves only one. Ain't no other way. No salvation, no other name. That's right. Power in the Bible. By it we are cleansed. John 15. Uh, well, yeah, I read verse 15 through 9. You are clean. Through the word which I have spoken unto you. I just read that word. We're clean and it cleanses us. Guess what else it does? It sanctifies us. 17. John 17, 17. Sanctify, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is true. You're sanctified. It's your salvation. And you're continuing to be sanctified. That's right. Throughout. It ain't a one time. It is a one time sanctification. It ain't. That sounds like a trend, you know. It is in the night. He sanctifies you immediately. He sets you apart of me. He makes you holy. He makes you righteous. He makes you godly. But then you're living it out. You're showing this world what's really in you now. That you've become a new creature. Amen. You do it all because he's living in you. Right. All because he's in you. In him we live. We move. And we have our being. We're built up. You know, he builds us up. That's what this Bible does. The power of the Bible. It builds us up. Is it building you up or tearing you down? Build what are you doing to people when you're out there preaching and teaching? Uh -oh. mm -hmm. uh -oh. Are you tearing people down? Uh -oh. Is it your job to tear people down? 
Some people believe that. Look, the, the law is sufficient. You ain't got to turn nobody down. You ain't got to add to it. You ain't got to take away. If you preach the straight word of God, it is sufficient. Amen. Amen. If it's perfect, then you ain't got to add to it. Right. Some believe because they say, I'm in the spirit that your spirit, the Holy Ghost is in you, is greater than the word of God. No, no, no. I hope you understand what I'm saying today. If your words that you're speaking and teaching and preaching are going further than the scriptures or less, that's a problem. Yep. Right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Or you may not see it right at first, but it is a problem. This is the wisdom of man that God's carrying down on the thing that you've got better words than God. He'll take you in your own craftiness. That's what he'll do. When we talk about that, don't add to or don't take away. But we're built up Acts 20. Acts 20, verse 32. And now, brethren, I commend you to who? To God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. You getting this here now? And now, brethren, he's talking to brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace. What is the word of his grace? Jesus Christ crucified. Come on. That's the word of his grace. That's the word they're power to say. Because that's the gospel. That Jesus came and he died. And he rose again so he could give you his power. The same power. He said, I have the power to lay my life down. I have the power to take it up again. That power comes to live in you. Amen. You have hope when you believe the gospel. Right. And it's a blessed hope too. And it's a living hope. That's right. Amen. A living hope. And it's a blessed hope. What does it mean that it's a lively, a living hope? It means you give you hope when you feel like you don't have no hope. When you don't know what God will do. How you live a living <laughs> Then you still have hope. You still blessed because your name is written. about the power of the Bible. By it, we defend against spiritual enemies. Hmm. Proverbs 35. <coughs> Proverbs 35. Every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that Put their trust in Him. Mm -hmm. Who are you trusting? Are you trusting in God? Are you trusting in Christ? He's a shield to them that put their trust in Him. Look what He says in the next verse. Add thou not unto His words, lest He reprove thee. It ain't going to be no man. He may use a man, but God's going to reprove you if you add His words. You better not make people think God is saying something that He ain't saying. That's right. Amen. Thou add thou not his word, lest he reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. We know the liars go to heaven. No. According to the Bible, they don't. You better be careful about this. Ephesians 6, talking about the power of the Bible. By it, we can defend against spiritual enemies. You got some enemies. You say you got enemies if you ain't saved. But you got a way to defend against these enemies if you're born again. You have the blood. The blood is covering you. Amen. Ain't you glad that you're in Christ today? Amen. Amen. Christ in you is the hope of glory. And this is sure hope too. It ain't some hope that we wondering if it's gonna happen. If you really saved, then you got a living hope. You got a blessed hope. Ephesians 6, 16, and 17. Above all, taking the shield of faith. This is the most important part of your armor that God gives you as a believer. The shield of faith. Maybe you got up and you didn't 
pray this morning like you should have. Maybe you got up this morning and you didn't read the Word of God like you should have. Maybe you got something you should have done and you didn't do it. But if you're a child of the King, and that faith that you have, and you believe in Christ, it is sufficient that God watches over his children. That's right. Amen. Take in the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Hmm. Yes, we ought to get up first. We ought to pray. There's many things we ought to do in a day. But sometimes people get off track. But I'm telling you, if your hope is in Christ, you still got like that shield of faith with you. And it may be when you realize you did things you didn't do, and God delivers you like he did Peter. Let me tell you something, Peter, we always talking about Peter, that when he asked the Lord, let me come out on the water to you. I just think about it, yeah, he, he had some faith. He had a lot of faith that nobody else was going to go out, did he? He was quick to go out there. But then he got out there. Was it why did he begin to sleep? Because he took his eyes off of Jesus. He took his eyes, took his, his faith, got weak when he seen the storm, when he seen all that was going on. But ain't you glad that when you weak, he's strong? Amen. Ain't you glad that if you begin to sink down, that you still his child, that he can pick you up? Come on. And he put your feet back on that part that you once believed in and that you first believed in. His grace is a bishop in our time of need. And you're going to have a time of need. It's going to come. It's going to come. You just don't know how. But it is sufficient. Do you believe that today? Amen. Amen. His, his grace is sufficient, not yours. Come on. Yeah. True. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. This is how we're going to defend against all spiritual enemies. And by it we are washed. You know we washed. Turn on back to Ephesians 5, 25. Start talking about husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water. Washing of water by the word. So by being washed. The word of God washes us. What is it for? Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. It washes our mind as we put in God's truth. It gets us so filled with the world that we see this vexation of our spirit. Just because we're around sinners and around sin, even though you saved, you're in the midst of Sodom like Lot was. The God word, you'll stay in it. And in prayer, he can continue to watch. Amen. Amen. Think about it. Lot was down in Sodom. He didn't even have a Bible. What did he have? Did he have nothing? Don't look like no other saint. Imagine if you were living in a place. You didn't even have the word of God. You didn't have a Bible. You didn't even have God's grace was sufficient to keep life. Faith that he had in God, God kept it. Even though he was down in a place that was terrible, God kept it. Because he had his faith in Christ. The Christ to come. He believed God. might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself a glory, look at earth, a glorious church. Not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. You believe the church is without blemish today? I'm talking about this church that you hear a lot of people speaking about. You've got to understand today that the true church of Christ is sitting inside a lot of people that are called. Made up of local churches all over the world. God's desire is for you to be in the church. If you are a Christian, if you're saved, you are supposed to be in a local church. Amen. Not just a universal church. Yeah, you got put in what we call the universal church. I know of nowhere in King James Bible that uses the word universal church. So that word is a made up word for us. 
Somebody show me where it says universal church. I want to see it. Because I haven't seen it. That's my memory bad today. It says the church. Right? God puts you in the church. But all the writings are to the local churches. Local churches. Amen. Amen. So, I mean, it don't take a lot of studying to see that you ought to be in a local church. Come on, but people speak against the church a lot because of what they see, the hypocrites. I reckon mean, they're speaking mainly against the hypocrites, but they'll be speaking against the church. You better be careful speaking against Christ's bride. I'm telling you something. Somebody goes speaking against my bride, I get upset. So if I get upset about somebody speaking against my bride, how do you think God feels you speaking against his bride? Angry. Even if you're doing it in ignorance, you better be, you better be careful. So all men to love their wives as their own body. You think Christ don't love his church? You know how much you love your wife? Christ loves his church. Probably the more you love your wife. Because he ain't never faithful. His love ain't never failed. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. How does that apply to the church? He that loveth his wife loveth himself. Ain't we talking about the church in context here? Mm -hmm. You read Christ loved this church? When you love the church, the local church, you say you love Christ. Come on now. Amen. And if you don't love the local church, you probably don't love Christ. Uh -oh. Mm -hmm. Everybody go with that, you said. Yeah, amen. God is going to be your ultimate judge, but if you're not being in the local church, that's what you're saying. If you don't love, you're not going to. I'm saying, I'm not going to be part of your bride, Lord. Mm. I'm just going to be that lost sheep out there. I'm going to go out. And I said, even though you go out, you want them sheep? <laughs> He's trying to get you back in. He will leave the 99 and go after you. Because he wants you to be back in his church. Come on. Amen. But some people like goats. They might be a sheep, but they act like a goat. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to tell you what God is going to do. He's going to put that rod on you. That rod and thy that, that staff. That's what that's talking about. Comfort. They comfort me. But you know, sometimes you got to go through pain before you feel comfort. Doctor will do that for you. You want to feel better? Let me tell you something. Jesus is the greatest doctor that ever been. He's the greatest. Right. He's a great physician. Amen. He knows how to bind up your wounds. Amen. And that means to break your leg or your arm to get you to see things, that's what he might do. He might just do it. To save your soul. That's, right. that's why. Your body might have to be your Bible strong to save your soul. To get you back on the right path. Right. So you don't destroy yourself. That's right. yeah. okay, no For no man, look what it says about this. For no man ever yet, ever yet, hated his own flesh. Look, if you're part of the church, you ain't going to be able to hate the local church. Impossible. But nourish it and cherishes it even as the Lord, the church. You say he's not talking about the church. Yes, he is. <laughs> there he is, right there. The church. Amen. That's what this is talking about. Absolutely. Talking about the power of the Bible. Do you believe this Bible's got power? Sure does. Come on, there's much power. Power to change, power to save, power to keep you safe. Do you believe that? Amen. He's got power and it's wonderful. Power in his power. And by it, we can produce much fruit. We can produce much fruit. For John 15, 5. Not just fruit, but much fruit. John 15, 5. I am the vine, and you are the branches. He that abideth in me. And you know how you abide in him? Oh, oh. Seems to be a little confused about this. You know how you abide, not here I'm saying, but throughout the world. People get this from how you abide in Christ. You ain't keeping your 
first. Your body drops by keeping the faith. You're kept by the power of God through faith. The same faith that saved you is what you keep. Amen. Amen. No more, no less. Okay? That'll keep you in the love of God, too. Because if you're outside the love of God, you're outside the grace of God. Mm. He loves you, but he can't, you're not saved. That's all found in Christ and him alone. Not Christ plus nothing else. Right. Faith in Christ. And that doesn't include repentance. Let me be clear on it. Because you can't have faith in Christ, not saving faith, without repentance. It's impossible. That natural mind has to be changed. That's right. About who God is, about what sin is, yep. about what God's going to do, what He has done. You repenting and believing the gospel. That's a Amen. supernatural miracle for a man to be born of a virgin and lay his life down. Then He said, I'll take it up again. Yep. Then He's going to give you that power if you believe in it. Praise God. <clears throat> We can produce much fruit. You know it can keep us from the path of the destroyer. Wow. Psalm 17, 4. Concerning the works of men, by the word of thy lips have I, I have kept me from the past of the destroyer. Psalm 17, 4. Concerning the works of men, by the word of thy lips, I have kept me from the past of the destroyer. Knew the destroyer, you know. Know what he says? By thy word, I shall be justified. By thy word, I shall be condemned. Mm -hmm. Whose word do you believe in today? Guess what else this Bible will do? It'll light up our path through life. It'll light it up. Psalm 119, 105, turn on over. Psalm 119. Morning, anybody in this world, you might 
Christ's love. He commended his love toward us yet while we were sinners. Christ died for the ungodly. He didn't die for the godly. You ain't saved by the blood as a saint. You saved the ungodly. Yes, you're repentant in that instance. I agree with that. A repentance to salvation. But Christ died for the ungodly. When we were weak, in due time he came. And he died. Great reward. Psalm 1911. I think oh, I read that I'm over by them is thy servant one. And in two things, that one, it warns us, the word of God warns us, the Bible warns us, and what else is it? And in keeping of them, what we just read, in keeping of them, there is not just reward, great reward. Great reward. And the greatest reward. I already said for the believer is Christ. He is the great reward. He is the pearl of great Christ. But he's not the only thing. His church is the pearl of great Christ. He and his church cannot be separated. They are one together. You have to cut the head off of the church to separate him from it. Think a person can live without his head? He's talking about the body. He's the head of it. You know why people walking around and claiming they're Christians, they go in all these different directions? But they ain't got no head no more. That's why. Yeah. You get, I hope you got that. They walking around, saying, I'm a Christian, I do this, I do that. But well, they ain't got the head leading them no more. Try to walk, throw your head up, put your something over it. Start losing oxygen. Get where you can't see. And you see how productive and fruitful you're going to be. Before long, you ain't going to know nothing. Guess what else? This Bible, the power of the Bible. The secrets of hearts are revealed. Hebrews 4, 12. You read in this Bible, guess what God's doing when you read it? He's discerning you, and he's discerning me. Hebrews 4 12. For the word of God is quick and powerful. Quick and powerful. That's what we're talking about. The Bible. The power of the Bible. For the word of God. That's what the word of God is. The Holy Bible. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. It says there ain't a short sword anywhere sharper than this sword. Than any two-edged sword. Piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thought. Verse 13 says, Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in sight. Everything is going to be made known, even a secret thing. God's going to judge one day. But all things, or that word all, are naked and open unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. So it reveals the secrets of hearts are revealed of the power of the Bible. Guess what else? By it, seed is scattered. Seed is scattered. Luke 8, 11. Y'all know this story. And what is the seed? The Word of God. Luke 8, 11. Now the parable is this. The seed is the Word of God. The power of the Bible. By it, men are judged. John 12, 48. John 12, 48. He that rejected me 
and receiveth not my words, hath one that judges him. One that judges. Who's that one that's going to judge? The world. All authority has been given unto him, and he became flesh. The word is going to judge him. And the word became flesh also. One that judges him, the word that I have spoken. The same shall judge him in the last day. Yeah, this word of God is going to judge him. For this is what he gave. And guess who's going to be executing that judgment? It's going to be King Jesus. All authority has been given unto him in heaven and in earth. But guess what he's going to use the judgment by? Just like judges in our land are supposed to go by the laws, the Constitution and the law that people make, they're supposed to go by. They don't always do it. They fail. I'm going to tell you something. God ain't going to fail. Jesus ain't going to fail. When you stand for him, he's going to get it right. He's going to get it right. He is not a man that he should lie. That ought to make us, if we know we ain't right, that should make you quit. That should make you shudder in you. In your, in your shoes, knowing that you did. He's like I was 31 years ago, pretending, pretending to be something I wasn't, knowing I wasn't really right with God, I knowing I wasn't saved because I didn't, I had never truly repented, never had God the song, never truly believed the gospel the way I should have. But I'm thankful that God put my punishment on Christ that what I should have given, He took for me because I believe. that simple. The sinner will either pay for his own sins or Christ will pay for them. If you want to pay for your own sins, just understand it's how you had to do it. You had to pay for them for all eternity. And you don't, if you could say that in hell for a million years or a hundred million years or ten thousand, what's the largest number? Ten trillion years. They just they bigger than that. They don't never end. Them numbers are unending. Just like eternity. If you could stay down there ten trillion years in hell and in the lake of fire and you do at the end of that ten trillion years that you could get up. You could have some hope. Mm -hmm. But there ain't no exit. That's the worst thing about hell. There is no hope. No hope. No hope. Not just the fire. There's no hope in hell. But Jesus is the blessed hope. Praise the hope today is Man, come That's on. What we need to be telling sinners. There's hope in Jesus Christ. Amen. Not Jesus, but something else. Jesus alone. I fear that many do not believe this today. Mm -hmm. They do not believe in what Christ did is sufficient. Or adding to the gospel. We see the penalty for adding to the Word of God by Revelation 22. And I know many people say, this is just talking about this prophecy. I don't believe that. I can tell you one thing. You're taking a big gamble saying that. To me, this is one book. This is one book. Right. People will say that because they want to add to the Word of God or they want to take away. Revelation 22. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of, of the prophecy of the prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plague that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life. This is a scene you won't get over. Adding to and taking away from the word of God can be an unpardonable sin. Now God knows when you cross the line, but I'm preaching today and I'm warning people, whoever hears this, that adding to and taking away from the Word of God is a unforgivable sin if it ain't repented of. Not of the blood. Out. He said, 
said, you're going to take not just out of the book of life, but out of the holy city. God has prepared a place for them to love him. Prepared a place. And from the things which were written in this, I'm just saying, in this book. I believe it's the book of God. Okay. And we already read Proverbs 36. I'll read it one more time. Add thou not unto his words, lest he reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. I would mean, encourage you to memorize that verse. verse. Add thou not unto his words, lest he reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. Or be terrible. You know there's symbols in the Bible. We're going to go over them real quick. The symbols of the Bible. We're talking about the power of the Bible and its symbols. You know what the symbol of the Bible? A light. A hammer. Fire. Sword. Lamp. Water. Honey. Seed. Mirror. Milk. about the rock, you fall on the rock, you'll be crushed. But if you fall on you, you'll be ground. I'm thankful that by the grace of God, I fell on the rock. What call there's no goodness in me, I can assure you. It was by his mercy, his great mercy. They remember a man that deserved hell, it was me. But it was by the Lord's mercy. I had somebody pray for me. And a mom prayed for me. And a grandma prayed for me. And other people prayed for me. And I didn't even know. What about you? Do you pray for somebody? You pray for somebody that needs to be saved? I think about Paul when they was on that ship when they didn't listen to Paul. And they was going to sail. He said, it's going to be hazardous. See, you done told me before, it's going to be hazardous. You keep going the way you're going, it's going to be hazardous. And they ain't receiving. Guess what God did, though. At some point, God's going to intervene. You tell him the truth from the word of God, God's going to honor his word. He may not honor you, but he's going to honor his word. But he does say that them that honor him, he will honor. He told Samuel that. And then the dove will be lightly esteemed. God's going to honor that word. And the man of God spoke, said it's going to be hazardous to you if you sell this ship. And then people didn't see daylight for 14 days. That was a miracle in itself. And a rock of dawn came upon him. Yeah. You study that word, wasn't it? A sea storm. And you don't see daylight for 14 days. You read some little thing in your mind going to start going off. Is that normal? 14 days of darkness? Then guess what, though? They came back to the man of God. He said, we're going to die. That's a good place to know when you get, get here, don't you're going to die for you all. If Jesus tells you, you're going to die. But God got them to that place that we, we're going to die. They came back to the man of God. And guess what? When you're talking to somebody, sometimes they might not be listening. But later they might be. When they come back to you, he said, guess what he said? Stay with the ship. Yep. You know who that ship was? Paul was representing to them people God. And then he said, stay with the ship. Many that are running off the ship, that ship is Christ. That ship is the church. And they're jumping off. You better stay with the church. You better stay with Christ to the end. That's right, He's able to keep it. And they're jumping off. And Paul said, it won't be nobody lost if you'll stay with the ship. Guess what they did then? They listened. And they made it to show. I don't know if they're going to make it to hell, but they made it to that show. That's what he promised. These promises in this book, they're going to come to pass. And I hope, I hope everybody here knows that and believes it. I think God's taught us some things. But it's some more he wanted to teach us stuff. Amen. Don't bail off. That's the only ship that's going to hell. That one is struck in Christ. Amen. That one is put
putting their faith in Christ alone. That's the ship is saving. Amen. And it's going to keep saving. It's saving now. It's going to keep saving. And it's going to keep on saving. Right. Ain't nothing stopping. 